Brookline, our town, a town with a rich history and a rich present. We pride ourselves on our excellent schools, our wealth of parks and open spaces, our superb public safety system, our active citizenry. From its beginning, Brookline has been home to prosperous people, and as a consequence, the town has prospered. We respect our past, and we honor with public monuments the people who gave of themselves to make our community, our commonwealth, our nation, strong and prosperous and free. But there is another part of our history, little known, yet hidden in plain sight. Look again at the plaque in Town Hall which honors the Minutemen of Brookline. There below names familiar to most of us, Aspinwall and Boylston and Corey, appear these names. Esquire Gardner's Adam, Esquire Boylston's Prince, and Esquire White's Peter. Adam and Peter and Prince may have been Minutemen, but they were also slaves. So too were Felix, property of Captain Henry Sewell, whom Sewell hired out to the town of Brookline to clean town hall, and Peter, another of Sewell's properties, who ran away from his owner, as did Prince, who fled the ownership of Joshua Boylston. Slave owning, both as a sign and a source of wealth, was a reality in colonial Brookline. As this map from 1746 indicates, over one-third of all the land in Brookline was held by slave owners. As early as 1675, residents of what is now Brookline were slave traders. George Cabot, first U.S. Senator from Massachusetts, maintained a home in Brookline and also traded in slaves. Edward Devotion is honored for his bequest to the town of Brookline for the building of a school. Less well known is that among the various properties listed in his will was a Negro. We know that this is part of our Brookline legacy. We know. We know that this is part of our Brookline legacy. We know. We know that this is part of our Brookline legacy. We know. Whereas over 70 children, women, and men were enslaved here, whereas the ownership and trade in enslaved persons increased the prosperity of many Brookline families, thus increasing the collective wealth of the town, whereas we believe that acknowledgement of past wrongs can promote reconciliation, it is time. It is time that the town meeting of Brookline hereby acknowledges with profound regret the enslavement of Native Americans and African Americans and the exploitation of slave labor by this town, within this town, and amongst the citizens of this town. It is time that town meeting call upon the people of Brookline to acknowledge and recognize contributions from Native Americans and African Americans to the town. It is time that we pledge continued vigilance against all practices and institutions that dehumanize and discriminate against people. It is time.